One of the easiest ways to speed up your workflow inside of Framer is to use color and text styles. Because just as in Figma, with styles, we can define a color or a text once and then reuse it all over our project and have one single source of truth. So in this video, I'll show my workflow for porting over Figma styles into Framer in a clean way. Now let's get straight into it. Let's go to the first point here, which is about collecting all the styles you have in your Figma document. So the first thing we want to do is to collect text from all the breakpoints we have. I have three breakpoints. I have desktop, I have tablet, and I have mobile. I would go into these and I would grab all the different text sizes for all the different sizes or all the different devices that I have. So I would take this heading here, I would do the same for this card heading and just copy and paste it outside of my frame like this and do this for all of the text sizes. Don't skip one single text size, like even these links here, text within buttons, body text, every single text. I would do something similar with colors. I would create maybe a circle like this. I would use my color picker to get the colors that I'll be using for different elements. So for example, for card backgrounds or for text colors or for buttons, I would collect them like this. So we have the white, we have this black color, we have this linear gradient for this button here. So I would collect all of these as well. And once that's done, I would move over to number two here, which is to set up a style guide. So I would grab all the text styles like this, like you saw me doing. I would rename them so that we have a hierarchy. So going from display to headings to body text here. Once I've collected all of this, all of the colors, all of the text styles for all the different sizes, I would create an auto layout like this. So just grab it all and create an auto layout. I would separate it with these lines just to make it more visually clear. And then I would be ready to export this over into Framer. So I would target my frame. I would launch the Framer plugin, copy the layers, and then move over into Framer. And in Framer, you might have exported all your designs beforehand, or you might wait to export the designs till after. It doesn't really matter. I've already exported the designs in this example, but that's totally up to you. What we want to do, however, is to create a new page. This page will be called Style Guide, and I'll change the desktop frame here to be 1440 in width because that's what we're using for our other pages here. And I'll just paste my style guide, change the color of the background here so that we can see it, change the height of this to be fit so that it fits all of this auto layout that I exported. I'll go to this auto layout and change the width to be fill. And then I'll add our different breakpoints. So plus tablet and plus phone. So now we have all the different breakpoints, but the text is still not responsive. This is because we haven't yet added our text styles. We just have the Figma references here. So I would go to assets here in this panel and we get this styles panel here. And we have some pre-made styles from Framer. We're not going to use those. We're going to create our own. So I go to the plus sign here, I click plus and text style. The first text style I want to create is for this display font here. I'll say that it's a heading one, I'll 
call it display one. And then we get this display one font added to this list. I'll click it to get this menu. The first thing I want to do is to change the font. You can see that in the reference material here from Figma, we're using Satoshi. So I'll go into font here, click it, go from web, which is just a Google font library to custom. And if you haven't uploaded your font, you would just click upload here. I've uploaded mine, so I'll take Satoshi Bold. You can see that it gets updated here. I'll go back, I'll change the default color to white. And I'll go down here to breakpoints. And this is very, very important. You need to make sure that the min width here corresponds to the width of your desktop frame. So 1440 here, then we should have 1440 here. If you don't do that, for example, if we go in here and click play, when you start changing the size here and you don't map this value here to this value, you're gonna see that the font changes sizes a bit weirdly. So just make sure to map this to this. So 1440 in both places. And when it comes to tablet here, medium is tablet. We want to map to this value. So 810, cool. And for mobile or phone, you don't have to care about it. Now it's time to add the sizes. So if we look at the reference here again, display one is 300 in size. So we change to 300. It's minus 15 in letter spacing and it's 1.2 in line height. If we go to the second one, still using the same style here, but we change to medium. We're gonna change to 200 in size. We're gonna change to minus 10 and still have 1.2. For the last one, which would be mobile or small, we're gonna change to 96 and minus 1.92. We will then go on to do this for every single size, every single text size. Now, as I've mentioned a couple of times, these are just references here, these two. So I'll remove these. I'll go into our main one. I'll go to styles here, click styles and add the display one style. And you can see how these change to be responsive. I'll fast forward here while I add some more styles. Okay, so I added a style for display two and one for heading one as well. It works in the exact same way. And you would do this for all the text styles and then once that's done, I would move over to the color styles. And these are much easier. You just go to the colors here. You would go to the fill option, click here, go from presets in this dropdown to shared colors, and then hit create. And from here, you would just give it a name, black and create, and you have your shared style. You would do this for all the colors as well. Now, if we go into display one here, I could go to color and from here in shared colors, I could choose black and whatever changes we make to black. So if I go in here and I edit and you could edit this from any place where you reach the shared style. So you could do it from here. You could do it from here. doesn't matter. Click edit. And when you change it, it changes in all the places where that style is applied. So I'll remove it from here. Now let's apply this in a real context. Let's go to home and we'll take this desktop screen. We'll add a tablet version and we'll add a mobile version. Now, as you can see, the responsive designs are on point here, but that doesn't matter because we want to see 
the text styles and the color styles. So I'll click this heading and I'll change the style here from nothing to display two. And voila, just like magic, we have it applied on all the screen sizes. I would change this, which is heading one to heading one and voila, changed across the board. For colors, I could do the same. I could go into this color here, change it. Now we only added black here, so this will be black. But as you can see, it applies to all the places. If I change it here as well to black, and then we go into edit black, you can see how this is very powerful when you build bigger projects. Once I've got my styles created, I usually start creating components. And if you want to learn exactly how I do that, then check out this video. Now, until the next one, have a great life. We'll talk soon. Ciao.